Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 25 of Revelation chapter 3. And we're going to be reading verse 11. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And we're at the point of um, the end of this verse, the statement that no man take thy crown. We're wondering, well, what is God saying this for? What, is, what does this have to do with anything in the Bible? Of course, the only way to understand, to properly understand, is to search the scriptures and see how the Lord uses this word crown. And when we do, uh, we actually get a very good idea of what God is saying. In Proverbs chapter 4, we're going to start there. We're going to look at a few verses, beginning in Proverbs 4, in verse 7, where it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Now, wisdom in the Bible is really uh, pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the personification of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 actually personifies wisdom, and you can clearly see Jesus as the one that's being referred to. So as God is moving Solomon to write these words in Proverbs 4, and he says, wisdom is the principal thing. That is the chief thing, the first thing. Therefore, get wisdom. That is, Christ is the all-important one. The all-important thing in this world is not family. It's not a job. It's not your bank account. It's not your health. The the all-important thing for every human being is Christ. And, And get him. There was a day God made Jesus available to the world, potentially. Anyone could have gone unto God at that time. And it was the day of salvation where the Lord was encouraging people. He was actually pleading with people, come to me and and be ye reconciled to me through Christ. And well, that, that day has passed, but, but here... Of course, the Bible is just dripping with statements like this, leading us, directing us to the Lord Jesus. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. And again, this is referring to wisdom, which is a figure of the Lord Jesus. And then in verse 9, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory, shall she deliver to thee. And now we get the picture. She, wisdom, or Christ, 1 Corinthians 1.30, uh, actually says that he is made unto us wisdom. So there, there's no question that Jesus is the one in view. Christ will give to thine head an ornament of grace. Because we're saved by faith. Uh, well, how's that verse go? I haven't looked at it for a while. In Ephesians chapter 2, it says in verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. That is, the faith that saves you is not yours, it's Christ. We're saved by the faith of Christ. We're justified by his faith, and not our own. That would be a work. And, and so here, by grace, you're saved through faith. And that's what wisdom will do. She will give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. There, God is linking together the crown of glory with wisdom and grace and the Lord Jesus. Jesus is the one that provides the crown to his people and and isn't it something that god does liken his people spiritually to kings and and it's kings that wear crowns upon their heads and it is the lord jesus as he saves a sinner that crowns him that makes him 
of royal blood of the family of God and and that he equips him to rule spiritually as a prophet, yes, as a priest, yes, but as a king. We're adopted into the family of God and and this is the figure that God uses. Also, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, in that chapter we read a really interesting passage. Let's begin in verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Here God is likening the Christian life to running a race. And at the end of a race, just as in the world, there is a prize. And and the Lord is making the comparison. Look at those that run in races. And of course, today we we have no end of examples of people that are striving and temperate in all things concerning their body, their physical body. They deprive themselves of a great many things to get in shape and stay in shape and and be in the best possible physical condition in order that they can run finally the race. And, and when the starter's gun goes off in the Olympics, they run all out. They, they put forth the best effort that they can. Why? To obtain a corruptible crown. They, they want the gold medal. They, they want the acclaim and and the renown they they want the prize money or whatever it is they th- that's their crown and sometimes it's it's actually uh, possibly a crown that is placed upon their head and it is the honor of men and god says now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown because whatever their winnings are wh- whatever that prize is you can be sure that it won't endure. It will not last for very long because the elements will deteriorate it. It will see corruption. It will be lost. It will eventually be gone from them. And they will not be able to continue to have it in their possession. They will not be able to continue holding on to their crown it's a corruptible crown it's a temporal crown and and yet they put so much effort forth to obtain it now you on the other hand child of god uh, this is the lord addressing us really in these verses each one of us you on the other hand are also to run in a race you're also to be temperate in all things And actually, uh, let me read verses 26 and 27. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that, that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And it's the very same idea. We have a physical body. And we need to get it uh, under control and bring it into subjection to the will of God as revealed through the Bible, through his word. We need to humble ourselves before him and refrain from going after the lusts of the flesh. We need to keep the body under and exercise dominion over the physical body in order that we can properly run the spiritual race of a Christian. And we do it to obtain a crown likewise, but not a mere corruptible crown. Our prize is not something that will eventually be lost and um, and gone, but our prize is an incorruptible crown. And this prize 
is mentioned, for instance, in Philippians chapter 3. It says there, and uh, let's see, let's start reading in verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You see the picture here, pressing towards the mark, the finish line. And, and forgetting those things which are behind and, and not um, dwelling upon things that have been sacrificed or given up for the sake of Christ, but just accurately and correctly um, understanding that all those things of the world are nothing but dung in comparison to winning the Lord Jesus Christ, to finishing the race. Uh, enduring until the end and crossing the finish line to receive the prize of the resurrection of the dead, the prize of a new resurrected body, the prize of eternal life, life without end, not life in some kind of corruptible condition, not life of old age with aches and pains and diseases, not life of trouble and affliction, life with the constant assaults of sin in our own body and all around us amongst the population, but eternal life, genuine life, true life in Christ, life without sin, without ailment, life without affliction, without illness or death, life without tears. This is the prize that lies before, and it is an incorruptible crown. It is a crown of glory, a, a crown that is well worth the struggle. Uh, actually, uh, we, we just don't know how glorious and, and how rich a crown, rich a reward God has in store for us. Or certainly uh, we would be much more temperate and, and much more ready to sacrifice and suffer and to keep our body under if we properly and, and rightly understood what God has given us. If we, if we could somehow grasp a hold of that unspeakable gift that he has granted us already in soul and has in store for us in body, and that, that wonderfully beautiful eternal future that awaits and that is eternal. A future that has no surprises of, of dark things or evil things in store at some point, at, at some turn. But it is all light. It, it is all beautiful and good and and so on well if we if we knew these things certainly it would encourage us to continue running the race and to not worry not be concerned uh, for daily struggles for um, afflictions of the flesh for those that might trouble us around us why should we care the athlete the olympian has his eyes on the prize. And so he's willing. He's 
uh, he's counted the cost, we could say, and he realizes, or she, I want that gold medal. I want to win that prize. And therefore, I am going to train and I am going to, um, to watch my diet. I'm going to watch everything that I put into my body to make sure I am in the best possible position to win that prize. I'm going to put forth a mighty effort to obtain the corruptible crown. And here God has given us such uh, a wonderful prize that that dwarfs anything. You could have a million gold medals and and all the prizes of the earth piled together and it wouldn't equal in the least bit that which he has reserved for his children. And and so this this is um, how the Lord is using this word crown. Here it's an incorruptible crown and of course it's again referring to eternal life, to salvation, to all the things that the Lord Jesus Christ freely gives us. And also in 2 Timothy, in chapter 4, we read um, in verse 5, I'll start there, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And here, you see, it's called the crown of righteousness, and the Lord Jesus is our righteousness. And it, he gives this crown to all of his people in James chapter 1. In the epistle to James chapter 1, we read in verse 7, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. And again, those that love his appearing, those that love him. And here it is called a crown of life. Again, pointing to eternal life. But, well, uh, we, we have a problem then, don't we? Because in Revelation 3.11, again, it says, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Now, if the crown is identified with righteousness and and wisdom and life and it is and and therefore the crown is bestowed by God upon a person who he has saved then why would God warn to uh, basically be careful hold fast to what you have that no man take thy crown is it possible for us to lose eternal life is it possible that this wonderful gift of god's grace might somehow um, be gone from us at some point if we don't uh, watch out if we're not careful well that's what uh, some teach of course it it's those that teach other kinds of gospels that teach a free will gospel they they teach it's your decision to accept Christ and therefore it's based on your will that when you become saved and if you happen to um, go back and and go to the world well then you've given up Christ you you had salvation but now you've lost it you've lost your salvation and what a pitiful poor gospel that that is that they're claiming that is that it is not the gospel God's gospel is an everlasting gospel. The work of salvation that he accomplishes in the heart of a person is an everlasting work. When he gives eternal life, well, uh, that's exactly what he gave. And if you have eternal life, if you ever lost it tomorrow or 
next year or some point in an eternity, then you never received eternal life. It was, it was something less than eternal life you receive. But that's not what God gives. He gives eternal, everlasting life where a sinner is forgiven all sins and now lives forevermore. Without end, he will never die and he'll never lose that gift, that uh, wonderfully um, incredible gift of God. And, and so that's not possible. No, uh, it, that, there's no way that's even in the realm of possibility. But what God is saying here is he's making reference to those that identify with his people. They look like his people. They claim to be his people. Uh, This was true of the Jews in the Old Testament. It's true of Christians in the New Testament. They profess to be the children of God, and therefore they're uh, making the claim that they have the crown. They have received the crown which wisdom places upon one's head, and that crown of righteousness and, and the crown of life. And so we read, uh, for instance, in uh, Lamentations, in Lamentations chapter 5, and the Lord used the prophet Jeremiah to write Lamentations, as well as the book of Jeremiah. And it says in verse 15 of Lamentations 5, the joy of our heart is ceased, our dance is turned into mourning, the crown is is fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. And Lamentations is a mournful um, discourse where God is moving Jeremiah to describe the wrath of God that has fallen upon Judah. The, The outward representation of the kingdom of God upon earth. And in turn, it spiritually relates to God's wrath falling upon the New Testament churches and congregations at the time of the end, the Great Tribulation. And so they identified with God as being his people. They identified, uh, therefore, with the crown. They would say they were spiritually kings, and yet their crown is fallen from their head. They have lost their crown because They were never truly the people of God. They were never truly saved. And they never had that eternal life to actually lose it. But God is just using that type of language. And he's picking up on that idea in Revelation 3 and verse 11. uh, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And here he's speaking again to the church in Philadelphia and to all the churches and congregations, to all who would say they are his people, to all who therefore would testify that they are wearing the crown of life, the crown that accompanies salvation. And and God is saying, okay, all right, if you say so, if you say you're a believer, then hold that fast which thou hast. Hold fast to the truths of my word as my people would and always do and maintain faithfulness to my word. But the churches and congregations failed to do this. They went astray. They developed their high places. They entered into false worship the worship of other gods, other gospels, and therefore the Lord came in judgment to visit, to see if they had repented. And when he recognized they had not, he took away their crown. And and now they no longer were identified with him. They no longer were his people. And that uh, outward relationship had come to an end. 